So um, Alex Sulkin, this, uh, this will be the, the only long-winded part for me. But again, thank you so much for, for joining on this with me, sir. Um, Good to be here. Thank you. So for those that don't know, um, you are the, uh, the current executive producer uh, and showrunner for Family Guy. Um, I believe you, you started in 2005, correct, with Family Guy and have been there since. Uh, 2011 um, is when you started. Is that when you became executive producer around 2011? That sounds right. Yeah, okay. Um, so, I mean, you're a writer behind what are, in my mind, iconic comedic staples across multiple categories. So not only a, a writer for Family Guy, but you've also helped craft and, and shape iconic episodes, notably to many fans, the, the, the Star Wars franchise nod. Um, but also the, you were the key writer behind what I refer to as my comfort food, uh, Ted and Ted one and two. Um, but even further than that, I think the desire behind this interview for, for me personally was just to experience and listen to the mind behind uh, a TV show that changed my life in many ways that I think many people wouldn't understand, but it was for reasons that I felt were explainable. Um, I felt connected to the nuance, um, that's cool. I, I felt that way growing up too with like Simpsons and different shows like that. I was like, oh, they finally something. Is yeah, 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 they get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And so I felt connected to that. And whether accurate or not, I felt like, you know, I was connecting to jokes that the writers were really putting in for themselves. Um, That's whether, cool. you know, we whether like, we like to hear that. Yeah. I mean, that, that was kind of like the cool thing of like, I could be wrong and I might just be coming, I'm becoming a family guy hipster in my head or whatever, but. I feel like they're putting these in for themselves and, uh, and your, your own observations and depictions of these specific life circumstances that people experience. I mean, even getting the micro expressions and microaggressions down, right? Like just dead on and uh, the couch scene from Blue Harvest, right? I, I think just to name one of, you know, okay, see my left hand? Do you see what my left hand's doing? Okay, do that on your end. Like Im immediately I'm looking at my dad and I'm like, you son of a, you know, like it just hits so good. Or, you know, the, the small things of, uh, on like the train robbery scene, uh, with, with Peter and Carter where he's, you know, well, he's a sheen, you know, never mind. You know, there's those small, those small little things that are so much fun. Yes. Yeah. And you guys tap into a part of human comedy that I, I've personally never seen. So, so thank you very much. Um, your, your work has impacted my life so much so that I got a tattoo on my back, which I think, I think you've seen <laughs> the, uh, the Bob Hope tattoo I got. Yeah, that's um, awesome. And me and my best friend got that one. It, and we didn't think, we didn't have the, the foresight to be like, you know, at some point we'll be at a pool party together <laughs> and, and it, it'll be okay. Well, um, <laughs> so with all that being said, my first question is, uh, how you been? <laughs> oh boy. What a, what a wonderful time in our country. Well, yeah. It, you know, the quarantine part before all the uh, racial unrest um, was different and, you know, at times a little bit frightening, but totally manageable. Like, I'm here with my wife and child and like we have a, I love our house, so it's not, I don't, day to day, I didn't, and I'm, I'm kind of like a layabout anyway, like I don't, sure. I don't move very much. So for me to be isolated at home is not the worst thing um since you know these other terrible things that have been going on it's it it has added a new uh unpleasant element to the whole uh period of time it's just you know it's been really shitty and and i uh i just hope that we can you know figure out some way to really make some meaningful change through it yeah all. very odd time to be alive right very totally, like just, totally yeah. who knew like literally when when trump was elected um while i found it shocking and and uh <clears throat> upsetting there was also like a kind of a part of me that was sort of like okay you know what this will be very good for comedy like sure right you know, like it'll be really good for comedy so I'm sure it'll be, I'm sure it won't be that bad. I mean, how bad could it be? And it just, of course, he's just way, in my opinion. Yeah, certainly. Like much worse than I would have ever pictured. So, you know, here we are. Yeah, truly. Yeah, I, I, I think that um, that's something I'm constantly thinking back to every day, obviously. Yeah. I think it's weird knowing everybody seems to be on the same wavelength of, oh, like, you know, you're dealing with different thoughts at home, like really being in your own mind more so than before. Yeah, very, very yeah. odd. Yeah. Any any habits that you formed <laughs> that you think will be long lasting? Well, I don't know how long lasting it'll be, but I certainly got engaged more with Instagram when we get, went on quarantine. Like, sure. I, 
I used to just kind of use it um, for pictures of my wife and daughter, basically. Yeah. And then I realized they weren't getting any likes. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> this is no. not uh, feasible. Okay. Yeah. So no, I just and honestly, my wife was uh, and is very encouraging. She always said to me, "She's like, you should do more funny stuff on Instagram." It's really great, dude. It's very oh, entertaining. That's very nice of you. I appreciate it, and it's been like a lot of fun for me. So you know, it's of course it's as challenging in some ways as ever just because of what's happening you know at first the pandemic and there was sort of a thought of like oh well you can't joke about that well and then then it's like well you kind of can yeah right in certain ways and then of course again with i mean this new craziness with george floyd being murdered and and uh, you know obviously that's not there's nothing funny about that right there's certain things that are floating in the universe around it you know right totally kind of mockable stuff right. in some way and you know I'm, I'm sure there are people that don't enjoy jokes in that area at all but other people and like yourself and others who are nice enough to reach out and say like you know I'm glad I'm laughing at something now totally yeah you know I mean it basically what I'm saying is that I'm no different than a first responder sure I'm saving <laughs> absolutely yeah no day. Yeah, no, I, and that's and I would not expect anybody to draw a comparison in any way left <laughs> yeah. field of that. Yeah, so <laughs> I, uh, yeah, that. Thank you for that uh, for saying that. I, um, I think that. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, you pretty much said it, but um, I think a, a follow up uh, to that is first of all, let me just say your Instagram is that. That was really a cool thing for me. Was first of all, kind of discovering you on Instagram because obviously, I mean in my childhood, your name is the first name that's really like that I'm noticing for whatever reason on the, as I'm popping up on the screen, I'm like Alex Sulkin. So sure enough, I, you know, go down the rabbit hole and I see right. your Instagram and I'm like, Oh, this dude's just kind of like living life and like enjoying his family and like, you know, making his friends laugh. Like it wasn't like this big thing. Not right. that there's anything wrong with that. Right. Right. But it was cool just watching from the back seat because it, it's so true. Like when you watch podcasts or you're in, you're somewhat invested in like a, uh, somebody in Hollywood for lack of better free, uh, verb- verbiage, right? You're invested in their life because you, something about them appeals to you. So right. you really feel a connection with them, <laughs> right? Totally. But then you meet them and, and, you're, and you're like, oh, that's right. You have no idea who I am. Uh, yeah. But it, it was cool to watch as you started posting these, uh, these hilarious impression videos. It was cool to like at least perceive Oh, he's seeing right now, like, oh, like people really find this like funny. This is great. Like, let's yeah. keep like I've got that, I've got this material, baby. Like, I know. <laughs> let's 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 keep this going. Oh, uh, totally, totally. That's that's my you you sound exactly like my inner ego. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty good at uh, at that. Um so follow up for you. I, I know there's uh for me, there's a specific question to ask the people, and this goes back to kind of your career, but to ask the people responsible for the joy and the experiences that I've had. And that question is this curated for you. So at 47 now still continuing in the path that you've carved for yourself. Are there ever these moments of mass reflection as you look back on the success and impact that you've been a part of? Well, you know, it on the, the short answer is no. Yeah. Um, I think that a, a lot of comedy writers, at least that I know are comedians that I know do, we all, whether they admit it or not, we all feed off of laughter and praise. You know, sure. we, we want to feel like we're we're doing a good job. Somebody's laughing at what we're writing or saying. Um, so, you know, there are times within it where, uh, you know, if we have a really good Family Guy episode or when Ted came out or, you know, even uh, to some of the stuff on Instagram where, I can, you know, I know inside, I'm like, oh, that, that is funny. Like that, right. what we did here was very funny. So there are moments along the way where you, you let it kind of sink in a little and you, you feed yourself that thing. Sure. That you need. Um, but, you know, in terms of like looking back and all that, it, it's still, you know, I've been in LA for 21 years and it seems like it's just been like, and it has been just like one continuous thing that's kind of moving forward, forward, forward. And there really isn't, there hasn't been cause yet to really kind of like look back Hmm. and say, wow, look what I did as much as I would like to do that. Cause that's what we all want was what I was saying at the beginning is to like look back and kind of nod like the end of a movie. Like we did it. Yeah. Um, 
but hopefully, you know, at a, at a much older age, I'll be able to kind of say, okay, now I can look back and say, ah, that's, that's good. Or like, let's watch this honey or like, yeah. that kind of stuff. But no, for now it's pretty much just like daily emails from standards telling us things we can't put in family guy. And you know, it's, sure. it's the, the regular day to day of that kind of stuff. Got it. Well, I mean, for whatever it's worth, uh, I think I'm, I'm, you've seen the Eagles, uh, history of the Eagles documentary, I'm sure. Oh, so, many so, times. So, right. So the, the part where Joe Walsh is talking about, you know, in your life, you know, it looks like chaos, you know, that whole thing. And, you know, but then you look at back on it, it's a finely crafted novel. And I think at least I can just speak from my own personal perspective that uh, I can look back and mark some of these moments of, yeah, it's, 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 we'll just say stupid cartoons, right? But ri but I, it wasn't for me. It was definitely a connection to something in my brain that I hadn't found with other people yet. And right. and that's a substantial thing that I think that not obviously not everybody gets that, but even just for a few people to get that, I think that though that far reaching effect is, is awesome. So thank you for that. I think that- Hey, um, thanks yeah. for saying that. Very nice. I'm glad. Yes, sir. I'm glad. Yeah. Um, what, are, uh, what are consistent thoughts that you have uh, while you're at work um, in the writer's room, like, are there any, like any moments when you kind of step outside yourself and you are, do, are there any processes that you go through mentally when you're in the, when you're in a writer's room or is it just kind of very loosey goosey? Yeah, it's pretty, we have a very good, you know, really talented, hilarious group of, uh, folks over there. Um, and now I've worked with most of them for the better part of 15 years. Because, um, you know, a lot of people want to stay in that job because they, they like it so much. And I think it's because we like each other. Right. So it's really like a lot of it is like hanging out with friends. Yeah. It feels that way. You know, just friends you know are funny and you want to try and be funnier than them. Yeah. Or you want to try and like get them somehow, you sure. know, during the day. And uh, so it's it's. I mean, 99% of the time, it's like a really, really fun job. And I'm kind of, honestly, if I think to the extent that I would ever get outside myself and think about it, it's more just like kind of sitting back and, and really feeling excited that the group of people in the room today are going to try and make, make me laugh, you know? Yeah. I'll sit back sometimes and, and, and you realize like, Oh, you know, we're all just really trying to make each other laugh. So yeah, and and you're with you know, world talent people. Not only that, but the, you know, these friends of yours are also you know incredible talents. So funny. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah, that's great. Um, how has the show changed for you coming into Family Guy, and now 15 years later, you're the showrunner? Like, do you look back on the the culture from like when you first got there? to now and do you look back and say oh there's some elements that i missed from that or oh i'm so glad we moved away from from that or well the the biggest element that i missed from that time was seth being in the room with us which you know he was for uh i mean from when it, the show came back on the air in 2005 seth was there in the room for the next five or six years you know like every day running it you know picking all the joke like that was that was great yeah um and, you know, he's, when he's in that room, he's the best family guy writer in the room by far. I mean, cause he, he knows exactly what he wants to hear from the characters and he knows exactly how to, to actually say it. Right. So, um, you know, that's what I missed from that time. And of course there are things, you know, uh, cultural shifts and, and things like that, that have uh, made us kind of conform our humor to what's going on in the world sure. and i think that's just that's only natural obviously sure. there's some part of me that feels like you should never really pull punches on any jokes if something's funny it's funny but i agree with you th but there are also moments where you know suddenly uh, maybe a joke about i'm sure that there have been many moments along the way uh, in family guy of like women getting slapped or something right and for a joke and maybe the joke was funny um but it feels like those kind of things you just don't you just wouldn't put in there anymore and sure. as much as i feel like if it's a funny joke it's a funny joke totally. i totally understand that like you know there are definitely things that you should not be 
continuing. Yeah, it's an odd, it's certainly an odd, I just as a, somebody's viewing it, it's odd to watch it kind of slowly progress where you're like, oh, like you said, it makes sense. And I think it is natural, but I, I'm with you on that. I, I don't think you should pull punches. I think it's really an important, uh, yeah. yeah, there's the whole, you know, it's a, it's important, you know, first amendment thing, but really I think it's the catharsis that comes with it too, that people really don't understand. And there's just a freedom in that. There's a freedom in being able to take shots like that. So I, I totally, yeah, and it, it was always, it was always fun. Like, you know, family guy, I think did it, does a, a very good job of making like 9-11 jokes, oh, which was a very, favorite, obviously, yeah, it was a tricky subject for a while. And then we started to realize there were ways to like thread in jokes that were like, holy shit, but were also <laughs> really funny. So it's, you know, it's yes. a good thing. I can think of the one that you got, I think fairly recently where it's like in every, even in the background of Boston, <laughs> you've got this, that. dude, that was so I great. Know. That was so that. great. Uh, well, that was good. That was so, that was in our, that was in our nineties episode. So it was just yeah. there all the time. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Um, so that is what you were just saying kind of uh, also leads into this next question, which is yeah, you have a pretty big presence on Twitter what's the big difference for you when making jokes on Twitter versus what you do get away with on family guy? Yeah. Well, you know, there, there are obviously differences uh, on both sides, like on Twitter, <clears throat> obviously you can, I can curse and it's not a problem. Sure. Um, but there's something, you know, you're a little more naked on Twitter. So if you're making that off color joke that you would gladly pitch for family guy, in a room of 20 people and kind of almost protected by the the number of people that are involved uh i think it's it's sometimes it would be different on twitter and you think like well do i want to necessarily go out on this limb by myself or am i stronger with this team sure. you know i know they all think it's funny but right it's it's tough because twitter has <clears throat> changed as we all know like yeah. from a place that i feel like used to be kind of fun and you know, mostly for jokes or, you know, promotion of, of upcoming events or whatever. Now, now by default, your heart rate has to be at 150 just to be on it. I know. It's like you're stepping on a treadmill that's already going really yeah, fast. Yeah, totally. Um, so, I, I, I mean, again, Instagram is, is becoming that way as well, understandably at this moment. But I did feel like up until recently that Instagram was, was, a, a more pleasant place like it's, sure. not, it's not always pleasant but generally more pleasant yeah i agree i can i agree with that uh a question two to your twitter is so i'll i'll go through and say i mean you've you've obviously had a lot of um success on your twitter and like a lot of people that just find your your quick thoughts very very hilarious and what right. i'll notice is as i go through them you know you'll you'll see ones that have quite a bit of engagement and ones that don't don't have as much but what i find personally is as i'm going through a lot of the ones that don't have as much engagement are really funny but I, in that moment, I'm thinking, okay, he must look at this and think, you guys don't get it. Whatever, I don't give a shit. Because <laughs> yeah, it seems like you just, you send out just great information, like pretty consistently. And, and I think a lot of times it'll even go over my head and I'm like, I'll look back at it. I'm like, oh, I didn't even get that joke until three weeks <laughs> yeah, later. I, yeah, I definitely do do that. I, I feel like, you know, I, because again, I think a lot of comedians and comedy writers have it big egos and so i do feel like if i send something little and weird out there and it doesn't really get anything i'm like they didn't get it <laughs> they don't, they don't not, understand. not my problem <laughs> exactly. don't get it. Um, yeah but it's i mean again i i find both things enjoyable and as you said before like they're cathartic in some way because you feel like you're you're getting something out there and there's a satisfaction in that too with instagram and Twitter, there's a, a satisfaction of knowing that it is just you. Right. So, you know, it's almost like, um, I don't know, it's like, it's like any kind of skill that you want to show off. Right. Totally. And, Look uh, what I can do. If you're, if you're a great drummer, you know, you'd want to be drumming all the time and maybe letting people know that you were good. Sure. So there, there's something about Twitter and, and Instagram where there's no question that it's it's you so if they hate it they don't you know they don't clearly you don't lock in with them but if they like it then they like you they think you're funny so right right very direct <laughs> yes very good <laughs> thank you for that man uh okay so these last couple of questions these are the ones that uh i kind of was waiting on so 
Sure. Thro- throwing back to a lesser known work was the single season sitcom, The Pits. Yeah, Lizzie, yes. Lizzie Kaplan, Dave Henry, people I find have very se- funny senses of humor and delivery. Um, you know, a non sequitur show with proven writer's talent behind it. What, what are your thoughts on that show and its ultimate fate? And how was it writing for the episode Square Wolves? Huh. Well, <laughs> it's so funny. I hadn't thought of that title in forever. Um, uh, the Pits, I think of a lot. The Pits was absolutely and the best maybe the best i think the best writing experience i've had um it was uh, i used to have a partner wellesley wild and uh so he and i came out of the late late show with craig kilborn and we wanted to do sitcoms so we wrote a couple of uh, spec scripts and uh sent them out you know to different shows and and we had a couple of interviews and one of them was with mike scully uh who runs the pits and like we just clicked with him right away like he's a, he was simpsons guy he ran the simpsons for a while and now he was getting this show the pits and uh we he hired us as a team as like you know junior writers and the room was just so awesome mike is he's so funny and he's the nicest guy. Mm. He's like one of those showrunners that like you just want to kind of do anything, anything for them you would do. And um, he was great. He like would just, we were so galvanized in that room. And we had these guys, Tom Gamble and Max Pross. And you see their names if uh, they're on Seinfeld, they're on um, they're, they're all great shows. The Simpsons, Letterman, and Saturday Night Live. Great, great minds. Yeah, great. And they were awesome. Like, uh, they're both so funny. And Tom Gamble in particular is just like a, a, a character who everyone who meets him just can't help but like love him and imitate him. And, and he's great. He's like the guy in the room that gets everybody in the room laughing with stuff that you can't really put in the script. Sure, sure. You're like, um, oh, damn it. <laughs> it was it was awesome. It was such a great experience. And then Seth was on that show. Right. So that, that's right. where we met Seth. That's where Wellesley and I met Seth. We're about we're all about the same age. Um so we became friendly with Seth and when the pits uh was canceled, uh Seth said, "Well, you know, they're talking about Family Guy might come back, so would you guys consider working there?" And we were like, "That'll never happen." <laughs> and like, luckily it did. But yeah, the as far as the pits going down like um you know, what when I look back on it, I bet I haven't seen it in a long time, but I bet I would find it very funny because I remember that it was incredibly silly. It was car- it was basically a cartoon, but with live action people. In that's it. and that's the sense I got. It was just from looking back on clips and stuff. Was I'm like, so this is in a lot of ways a Family Guy live action, like as far yeah. as the plots and how it just jumps totally nonsensically back and forth. It's great. I yeah. Say, yeah. So it was, uh, yeah, maybe a, like a little ahead of its time or maybe should have been animated. I don't know. But the the writer's room was awesome. It was just a, a great experience. And and Mike is, Mike Scully and, and Tom Gamble and Max Pross, like I've worked with them again a couple of times. And it's just one of those things where we were just so lucky to come into, it happened to be that room that we went to. Well, we're lucky to get hired anywhere, but that we ended up with those guys when we almost ended up on a show called uh, Bram and Alice that okay. was only on for one season as well. And that was run by uh, Christopher Lloyd and, and Joe Keenan. Oh boy. Um, and so Christopher Lloyd, not the actor. Oh, okay. I'm like, yeah. I'm like Marty, huh? Yeah, no. And, and now Christopher Lloyd is like a big deal. He, he, was big on Frasier and I think he and this guy Steve Levitan run a, a modern family okay so but we had this meeting with Lloyd and Keenan and Christopher Lloyd is like he's a very serious guy for a comedy writer and Joe Keenan also seemed like pretty serious and I just remember Wellesley and I being in that office we were so young and meeting these guys they wrote for Frasier and oh my god how, how old were you at the time we were 25 and oh, they beautiful. were yeah and they were you know i don't know 40 or something but they seemed like they were our grandparents totally and and i remember them asking us in that meeting 
what theater did we enjoy? And it was just like, oh my God, like Shit. I have no idea. I'm like, I'm like I kind of liked Annie, you know, yeah. like, you know that yeah, everything totally. is, everything's going to sound stupid at this point. <laughs> so I which just, I'm so glad we, we ended up on the pits and uh, yeah, I still talk to Mike all the time and, and, you know, he's, he's been a great, I, I, I would say mentor, but it, it just makes him seem like he's this old, old guy, but he's, he's still, you know, he's, he runs that show Duncanville that's on Fox. Right on. Um, yeah. So he's great. Very cool. Yeah. Awesome, man. Okay. Got another one for you. So in 2000, similar time in 2003, you, uh, John Viner, is that how you say his last name? Yep. yep. John Viner and Daniel Milder were the developing writers for an 11 minute short called the support group which correct me if I'm wrong, was an official selection of Sundance 03, the Milan Film Festival, the Palm Springs International Short Film Festival, among others. Uh, what was that film about and what can you tell me about that time period of your life? Very interesting um, that you bring that up because that was actually, I was in a sketch comedy group with John Viner and Daniel Milder and Josh Weinstein, who was the other guy in that uh, movie. And we did that as a sketch, the support, it was a support group for uh, men who had been beaten by women at sports. Okay. And which, you know, it's like, you, you can't, you couldn't even make that a sketch now today because that would be, the, the premise would be offensive. Oh, 100%. But at that time it was very funny. And uh, so we used to do it as a sketch. And then uh, I was still in that sketch group when I, got my first uh, we were in new york and then i got my first job in los angeles so i basically said sayonara to those suckers <laughs> you know, like, and so, like, i'm moving to la and then a couple years later they were you know still doing this the sketch group and they wanted to turn the support group into a short film and i but i was in la so they filmed it in like connecticut or something like i, I wasn't even there which was fine. Like I said, please, yeah, do it. Great. Um, so I had almost nothing to do with the the making of that short film, other than the fact that uh, I think John Viner and I wrote the uh, original sketch. Got it. Um, so that's really all that happened. And the, I don't, I could not tell you if that was a selection anywhere. I didn't really follow its progress. That's that great. Closely. No, that's great. I love that. It's very interesting. Yeah. Cool, man. Um, so final question for you. Sure. Looking down the pipeline of your life, uh, what are you projecting as far as, uh, are there any passion projects that you want to accomplish or are there any specific goals that you want to fulfill or even set? Especially now with the pressures of the world really kind of forcing everybody to have laser focus. <laughs> yeah, no, well, you know, I, um, in terms of professionally, I am, I'm working on a, a pilot uh, that would be a live action um, sort of single cam, not multi cam thing. And it would be set in Boston and it would have to be shot in Boston. It's kind of like a part drama, part comedy thing about okay. Irish brothers growing up in Boston. Love it. So I'm sure you'd have some stories you could contribute. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, so that's, you know, I've been, I've been working on that script for a while. Um, and, uh, you know, during this quarantine, I, I definitely should have gotten it done already, but I've been too busy, uh, you know, filming myself for Instagram. Right. Um, I, I, but, I get it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and other than that, you know, I mean, I, I would assume that sometime, you know, within the next three, five years, there's going to be a Family Guy movie. Certainly would hope to be involved in that. Um uh, Seth has been talking recently about possibly doing a um, like a reboot of uh, Naked Gun. Oh, so, <laughs> you know, I, I, I think that would be incredibly fun to work on. And uh, so, yeah, those are I just keep thinking about uh, a lot professionally, a, a lot of the same stuff I was thinking about before. Yeah. Uh, the shit hit the fan. Sure. Yeah. Right on, man. Well, Alec, dude, thank you so much for uh, your, I think probably I've met a lot of people just in passing, but you're, you're, you probably have just the best, uh, easiest to get along with uh, demeanor and very 
very easy to talk to you and I appreciate it because it's so it's you know it's it's intimidating to talk to one of you know the people that you've known of for so long so thank you for being awesome if you ever met me in person I guarantee you would not be intimidated (laughs) (laughs) well thank you so much man uh again for doing this my Uh, pleasure thank you for having me totally being it sounds like you're uh you honestly from all the things you've said in this interview you seem like exactly the kind of person who I would want watching whatever we're doing just because it feels like sometimes in the writer's room you think to yourself like is anyone going to get that ah we'll put it in anyway totally it feels like you're getting that absolutely I can tell you absolutely so thank you for for that and and I'll continue to enjoy it for hopefully many years thank you all right man good talking to you 